Okay, welcome everyone to Chart's free webinar series. Today we are pleased to have Dan Tasikis of Docebo and Richard Weedmark of Gilmore Global, and they are going to be presenting on the impact of AI in learning and development. Welcome, Dan and Richard. Thanks, Tara. Thanks Thank very everyone. much. Dan, uh, I guess over to you to uh, start off the presentation today. Hey, thank you so much, Richard. So um, really happy to be here, uh, Tara and Richard. A um, little bit about myself before we get into the content here. My name is Dan Tasikis. I am an account executive here at Docebo. I've been with the organization for approximately three years. I have been in software for about 10 years and I've spent six of those years in HR tech. Uh, artificial intelligence is a topic that has always interested me and really happy to be partnering with Gilmore Global to be talking to you about that here today. So as far as an agenda is concerned, we're going to start off talking about the evolution of learning and development and then uh, artificial intelligence as the third generation of L&D. Uh, then broadly speaking, we're going to talk about AI and L&D overall. So how it's utilized, what different platforms are doing with AI and how it can impact you. We're going to do a brief demo of our platform, Docebo, and show you how we handle uh, artificial intelligence. And then we are going to spend some time with uh, Q&A at the end. All right, so let's kick things off here. So L&D has evolved to reflect the expectations of the modern learner. Adapting to the needs and expectations of today's learners means recognizing a wider acceptance of learning technology, a deeper understanding of the importance of instructional design, that organizations must invest in the professional development of their workforces because that's what their learners expect, and a focus on the actual outcomes of learning as it's an effective way of connecting learners to organizational performance and therefore revenue. L&D has evolved to recognize the need for a wider acceptance of technology, to develop a deeper understanding of the importance of instructional design, to invest in professional development, to place a renewed interest, uh, sorry, a renewed focus on learning outcomes and to make actual use of simulation and gaming and learning activities. So we've really found that AI transforms learning into a competitive advantage. Data has long been coined the new oil, but data on its own won't power your organization's learning engine. It's now critical to transform the data collected by your platform on your learner's activities into actionable insights that create unique experiences with artificial intelligence. What's unique about AI in the context of e-learning is that it is built on learning specific algorithms powered by fine tuned combination of machine learning, deep learning and natural language processing. These specialized algorithms have been developed to enable your learning platform to automatically perform some of the actions that you would normally do manually, either as a learner or as a system admin. For example, your learning platform can now safely and securely analyze nearly all of the different types of content that you're adding into your platform and find ways to enhance and simplify the learning experience. Learners can use the platform's global search to find the most relevant content for them without an admin needing to manually tag the content or add additional fields. Additionally, learners can invite other learners to view their freshly uploaded informal learning uh, content based on these algorithms abilities to analyze both the new content and the historical learning patterns. The best part is that it all happens behind the scenes without ever interrupting the learning experience. AI exposes endless possibilities for civilization and in incredibly positive ways, contrary to what Hollywood might suggest. Just think smart automation of various admin tasks, plus the complete personalization of learning. AI is dependent almost entirely on algorithms developed by human beings. AI performs tasks that would normally require human intelligence, such as visual perception, speech recognition, and decision-making and translations. AI and learning and development is much more than a content suggestion engine. When most people consider how AI's impact is already being felt in our everyday lives, the go-to response is suggestion engines that power the content recommendations you see each time you log into Netflix or Amazon. Indeed, AI is the backbone of these suggestion engines. And in the context of e-learning, it would be easy to pigeonhole a learning platform's AI functionalities to just that, a suggestion engine. However, AI-powered learning is much more than just that. By making AI the engine upon which the whole learning platform lies, L&D has the opportunity to open up new capabilities for admins to develop more immersive and personalized learning experience while, experiences while automating menial tasks. For learners, 
AI drives the three E's that are the, that are the key to achieving better learning experiences, expedience, efficiency, efficiency, and effortlessness. The effectiveness of AI depends on how much people actually use the system. The more data the system processes, the more AI learns about the individual learner's needs, turning the platform into a continuous improvement engine that grows alongside your learners. So here are some of the key pillars, um, AI pillars, I should say, in e-learning today. Starting with the content curation aggregation engine from internal sources. And that's really the algorithm used to recommend content to learners based on the makeup of that content and a learner's role within an organization. The second pillar here would be the content suggestion uh, and personalization engine. And that really takes it a step further and that's the recommendation of content based on a learner's activity. The third one here, admin task automation, pretty straightforward, I'll give you an example here. Basically an LMS system administrator not having to worry about set up, setting up notifications to remind learner about a particular task. The system will do that for them. Next are virtual coach. So this is the ability for the learner to actually to be able to interact with the system's AI itself. The content analyst, that is the auto tagging and auto transcribing and categorizing of content that is uploaded to the system. And finally, content curation from external sources. That allows for a platform to basically pull curated content from externally approved sources to address learner skill gaps. So a few of the many benefits of truly automated learning uh, powered by AI, we're just gonna go, go through a few of those benefits here. So to boost engagement and results, machine learning algorithms predict, predict outcomes, allowing you to provide specific content based on a learner's past performance and individual goals. For example, online learners that express a particular skill gap receive targeted recommendations that build knowledge related to their skill gap in a more personalized format. This could include scenarios where the system would recognize that a learner might be able to actually skip a few modules to take a more comprehensive and less linear uh, learning journey than someone who might have the basic skills related to that particular topic. Second one here, allocate resources to tasks of value. So learners receive the exact online resources they require to fill gaps and achieve learning goals, which equates to less seat time and training payroll hours. Instead, employees get the information they need quickly as online training resources are tailor-made to their personal professional objectives. Additionally, L&D admins and support staff spend less time analyzing metrics and reports to instead focus on producing top-notch learning content. With AI, the system takes care of the big data so the L&D team can spend more time and energy on more valuable tasks. Thirdly, uh, to automate content scheduling and delivery. So for such a game-changing technology, it's ironic that AI and machine learning are in fact designed to han handle fairly menial yet crucial tasks in the name of saving, saving humans time to focus on bigger picture activities. With AI, your learning platform could schedule coursework or deliver resources based on individual learner assessments, results, and simulations. This would create an environment in which it would be possible to automate uh, automatically predict course maps for each of your learners and to enroll uh, them into any of your organization's courses and then readjust whenever the need arises. And finally, it's to boost ROI. So consider the simple formula, less training time plus greater personalization equals better learning outcomes. You would spend less online, <clears throat> less on online training without sacrificing desired outcomes as predictive analytics and your AI equipped learning platform track and forecast every move each of your learners make. This also gives you the power to launch online learning resources wherever and whenever they're required. Personalized learning at scale. While it might be easy to look at AI and consider it is simply another feature of learning technology designed to make it easier or cheaper, seeing AI for its true potential requires looking at learning through a completely different lens. That means understanding that each user is different, personalized content and at its presentation, accommodating personal preferences and learning styles for each of your learners. This is impossible without AI. Personalized learning involves passing some control over your learners and giving them some input on how they progress through their learning activities. 
Taking learning experiences further with AI means expanding the scope of the availability and effectiveness of your learning content, especially as it relates to the availability of flexible learning opportunities via smartphones and tablets and the development of personalized content uh, that reflects individual learner needs. These functions <clears throat> these functionalities would take personalization to a whole new level because the system essentially takes the wheel to drive the overall effectiveness of an individual learner journey. Machine learning algorithms predict outcomes, allowing you to provide specific content based on a learner's past performance and individual goals. So now we're going to take a quick sneak peek at how Docebo handles some of the AI activities discussed here. Can any of the other speakers here just confirm that you can see the platform on my screen? Yes. Perfect. So this is a typical learning platform that learners would be logging into uh, to access their training material. Now, obviously, if they were taking advantage of single sign-on, they'd be able to be automatically authenticated into the platform. Once they log into the platform, they're presented with their dashboard, uh, essentially in the background here. But the first uh, instance of AI that they would be presented with would be this discover new content page here. And what this is actually going to do is have that particular individual define their role within an, organ within an organization and start to source externally curated content for them. Just going to choose a role here. Now it's going to recommend some areas of interest for me. I can also type in my own areas of interest if I so choose. Now it's going to ask me to rate myself on my areas of interest. And now the system's AI is going to be working with externally approved uh, content authors uh, to essentially produce content to fill and address those skill gaps. That's the first instance of AI in the platform. Now the second part I wanted to show you quickly is the idea of social learning within the platform and how AI manifests itself into that part of the system. So you're going to be setting up different curated uh, channels here. And each one of these channels is going to be focused on a particular topic, uh, department, uh, subject, theme. And you can set up different visibility rights to each one of these channels. Um, and in these channels, there's going to be content that has been shared by subject matter experts or approved by subject matter experts that can then be consumed by the rest of the organization. So if we were to hop into one of these documents here, the first thing you're going to see is that you as the learner are going to have the ability, of course, to consume that content, rate that content, comment on that content, as well as ask the subject matter experts about that content. Now where the artificial intelligence comes into play is the system, kind of like a Netflix or YouTube style of training, is actually taking a look at that content and your learner activity and recommending other content that you might find interesting. On the flip side of that, if you really enjoy this content and you think somebody perhaps on your team or across the organization might also find this piece of content interesting, you can invite others to watch that content. In doing so, the, the system is also looking at other learners' activities across different departments and recommending or suggesting the users who would be most likely interested in that content that you are consuming right now. Additionally, any piece of content that is uploaded into the system, whether it's a SCORM package, a PDF, a PowerPoint, an MP4, uh, the system's artificial intelligence is auto-tagging and auto-transcribing that content. So when you are in the global search bar, assuming you have visibility rights to see that content, the system's AI is actually recommending the most likely results to you based on your search. Now the results produced can be a combination of formal learning assets, informal learning assets, or questions that were asked at any point in time. 
Now the, the last way that um, uh, I want to show you in terms of how the system works and, and artificial intelligence basically is present in the platform is the idea of the virtual coach. So the virtual coach, um, at this point, you're actually interacting with the artificial intelligence in the platform itself. So right off the bat, the system is going to be presenting you with notifications and tasks that are relevant to your learning journey. You're going to be able to have a course recommended, um, you know, perhaps get an update on your learning progress. You can also ask the coach a question. The system's AI is now taking a look at the content we have available, as well as my role and my visibility rights and permission rights within the organization and presenting content to me that would be relevant to my search. So these are just a few of the ways that Docebo um, and you know, learning platforms in general would be looking to um, use artificial intelligence to uh, basically complement the learner's journey um, as they're going through their, their typical training. That was most of the content we have for you here today. Uh, so before we move into the Q&A section, some quick information about Docebo. Established in 2005, Docebo's mission is to redefine the way enterprises learn by applying new technologies to the traditional corporate learning management system market. Docebo provides an easy to use, highly configurable and affordable learning platform with end-to-end -end capabilities and critical functionality needed to train internal and external workforces, partners and customers. This allows customers to take control of their desired training strategies and retain institutional knowledge while providing efficient course delivery, tracking of learning progress, advanced social learning opportunities, and in-depth reporting and analytics. Docebo's robust platforms helps its customers centralize the broad range of learning materials from peer enterprises and learners into one artificial intelligence powered learning platform to expedite and enrich the learning process, increase productivity, and grow teams uniformly. We'd really now like to open up the webinar to some questions. Um, I'll be monitoring the chat here with Richard and really look forward to getting your thoughts and feedback. Dan, hi, it's Richard. And maybe I'll start off the Q&A uh, session with a, a question here. How can AI help increase learner engagement across an organization? Um, that's a good question. So the first thing I will say is, I mean, you can have the best AI platform in the world, uh, but if no one at your organization knows about it, it's really going to fall, fall flat for your learners. So you're going to want to take some critical steps to make your business and make your learners aware of that platform. Um, you know, that involves, you know, some really good change management. So if you're using a different learning platform or, or LMS currently, uh, to really minimize the speed bumps um, of switching over to a new platform. Maybe run a small pilot with a small group of learners. Make sure you've got the kinks worked out before uh, doing a full cutover. Um, you're also really going to want to market the platform to your learners. So um, talk about it on upcoming webinars. Maybe um, post a little article or snippet about it on your intranet. Um, and what I've also seen work quite well is to find department heads across your organization uh, who can really champion the platform for you and really enforce the, the use of that platform for their respective teams and, and learners. So that really needs to happen um, as a baseline before you start uh, seeing true um, you know, in, engagement increases in the platform itself. Then where AI kicks in is when, once those learners are on the platform, um, you know, as you saw a little bit in the demo there, uh, the, the artificial intelligence can do everything from promoting learners to be a little bit more social in the platform, share ideas, share thoughts, um, you know, comment on different pieces of, of content, uh, promote rewards, uh, you know, maybe for different learning activities in the system. Um, notifications, of course, can be set up through the artificial intelligence to remind learners of 
um, you know, expiring courses or certificates. So there's there's really a lot of features and functions that um, uh, you know are manifested in artificial intelligence that can help to promote learner engagement within the system. However, I guess what I was saying earlier, without you know people really taking advantage of that system to its fullest, um, you're not going to drive the the results that um, that you would hope for. Hope that answers your question. Great, thanks very much. Richard, can you see the other questions that have been submitted to the Q&A section? Yes, I can. So I will read them, Dan. Uh, sure. Is the site a social site too for all users, allowing, allowing them to share photos, articles, et cetera? Uh, so we have seen some organizations use um, the system in that way. Now I should mention that you you are going to be able to set up a peer review uh, process, and most platforms do allow for this. Whereas you're not just allowing uh, the you know anyone at any time to post anything um, that the entire organization can see. You're going to want to put in different checks and balance, balances in place where different subject matter experts or um, you know, admins can approve of that content or approve of that, you know, social post before it gets published for everybody across the organization to see. Um, but we, we have seen some organization, organizations, for instance, maybe a leadership team, um, you know, 20 or 30 individuals that they really just open up the platform to be completely social. Anybody can post anything and it really becomes a great way for, uh, for knowledge sharing to happen in that regard if used properly. Great, thanks, Dan. Can AI uh, platform work on an existing learning management platform? Does it piggyback with current platform? So we would need to probably take a deeper dive into um, you know what that particular organization um, you know would be you know would be using currently. Uh, so we have seen um, you know Dechebo being an AI-based learning platform work very closely with, um, you know, like an LXP, for instance, where there's that combination of that traditional LMS functionality, um, you know, you know, with those AI uh, type features in combination with, uh, you know, content that is being externally sourced by, uh, you know, external aggregators in that regard. Um, we typically would not see um, uh, you know, an uh, AI, like an AI platform like Docebo being used in combination with another LMS because there will be a lot of redundancy and replication of functionality. Um, so it, it would really have to be looked at as a case by case basis unless that LMS was, you know, very basic and very specific um, as far as its functions to the organization was concerned. Then, then it is certainly conceivable to use a, a couple of platforms in that regard. Great, thank you. What type of training and support do the administrators of the company receive if they decide to go with the Docebo platform? That's a good question. So um, there are a few different packages uh, available, um, but typically upon partnering with an organization like Docebo, you would be assigned um, four key resources. So you'd be assigned a solution deployment manager who would be having weekly meetings with your organization, um, basically helping you to configure the platform. Um, and that can happen over the course of two months, three months, or four months, depending on which onboarding package was selected. Um, in addition to that, you would be assigned uh, an uh, LMS administrator or learning and support specialist um, who would be working very closely with you to train your administrators and make them experts on the system. So outside of the implementation, these would be dedicated trainers to you, turning you into experts. Your third resource would be your customer success manager. They would act as your project manager during your implementation, but then also your dedicated concierge for the duration of your contract. So whether that is a two-year contract, three-year contract, whatever the case may be, they are going to be your go-to person uh, for everything support related, um, you know, to ensure that you are happy and satisfied with the system. They're going to be introducing you to ad additional modules and functionality, and they're going to be your go-to resource. Um, and then finally, your account manager uh, would work, uh, you know, closely with you from a sales and commercial perspective uh, to, you know, make sure that you, you know, always have the appropriate licenses uh, for your your organization. In addition to those um, personnel resources, you're going to have access to what we call our Doche Academy, uh, which is an 
basically an online collection of videos of how to videos that would help an organization um, do some self training some self teaching um, throughout the implementation process. Um, and then finally, uh, we have a, a pretty robust and constantly updated knowledge base that serves as a great tool that helps organizations figure out those those little features in the system that can sometimes help um, with uh, with a large implementation. So, so you're going to get a combination of um, human resources and, and digital resources to to help you really achieve your onboarding and implementation goals. Great, thanks very much, Dan. Does Docebo uh, connect you with your hiring platform to automatically connect new hires and terminations? Most certainly. So um, Docebo um, has integrations with dozens of different uh, HRIS systems, payroll systems, applicant tracking systems uh, that will automatically bring in new hires. Um, that will, um, you know, remove uh, terminated employees, that will take care of department changes, promotions, um, and, you know, when any of those things happen, the appropriate dashboards and content and permissions and visibility rights um, will be assigned to those learners as they, or unassigned to those learners if they're terminated, as they, uh, as they go through their, um, th through their journey. Great, thank you. Dan, can you go over the coaching feature in some additional detail, please? Sure, of course. So um, that might be a good idea to actually pop, uh, pop open the platform itself here. So the feature is called Coach and Share within Docebo. Um, and, you know, most of the content that an organization, um, you know, has, um, uh, has their learners complete are, are formal pieces of content. So something that is required as part of a compli uh, you know, a, a compliance course, a certificate, maybe an onboarding uh, curriculum that you need to complete. Now, the idea of coaching is the idea of creating some informal content of, across your organization. So leveraging all of those experienced employees across your organizations, managers, subject matter experts who have some great ideas uh, and, and maybe content to share with the rest of the organization. So you create these different uh, channels. These channels can be set up on a department by department basis. Uh, again, uh, you can create a theme um, you know, that, that many different employees across different divisions and, and departments can have access to. And within these, um, within these channels, learners can then contribute uh, content. Now you can have it so that learners can contribute content directly to the channel. You can have it so that only subject matter experts can um, contribute to the channel, or you can encourage learners to contribute content to the channel, but that content needs to be approved before it actually gets published to a channel for everybody to see, right? And what that contribution looks like is like so. You basically hit this contribute button, and this can be done from a smartphone or a tablet, um, where you can actually pull in a piece of content from your from your hard drive. You can pull in something from your uh, from your Google Drive. You can paste a link from a popular uh, video sharing site like YouTube or Vimeo. Um, but what is actually quite popular in our system is the idea to record your screen or record your webcam. So the idea here is, you know, maybe um, you know I'm an employee. Uh, you know, I work on the sales team. And I'd like to talk about, you know, uh, you know, a new sales pitch of this, um, you know, great new product or this great new, uh, you know, hotel uh, that I want to make others aware of. So I can actually record my screen, my webcam, give a presentation to my uh, using my webcam and then upload that piece of content to a channel to be approved to then be auto tag and auto transcribed and then published to the channel for everybody to search for that content and, and kind of view and consume that content after the fact. Right. And that functionality is is, you know, can really be applied in a lot of different ways. We've seen people use this functionality to do product demos, uh, you know, product updates, um, you know, marketing, uh, you know, seminars, marketing materials. Um, you can you can really use that record your screen function to create uh, a lot of different types of pieces of content uh, for others to to view that content in the system. And I should mention you know, for any organization who is on the line, I'm going to be working very closely with um, 
you know, with Gilmore Global. Um, so if anyone did want a, a more personalized in-depth product demo of this feature or any other features, we'd be happy to, to set up time with you. But hopefully this, um, you know, this gave a, a brief overview in terms of what we, what we do from a social perspective. Great, thanks very much. Dan, can you show us uh, any reporting that the uh, Docebo platform provides? For example, if you were checking a user or overall users for course completions? Yeah, definitely. So i um, just going to log back in as an admin. So as a system administrator um, or a manager, depending on, um, you know, what power user rights you have given specific roles within the organization, you're going to have access to reporting functions within the platform. Um, and there are a number of out of the box reports in the platform where you can get, um, you know, some quick graphical reports in the system. Um, you can also go, you know, very in depth and get some very granular type data out of the system. So, um, here are kind of the out of the box reports I was referring to. If you need to get some quick information regarding a particular user or a particular course, or maybe all of your courses overall, you're just going to start typing in the name of that particular course, generate the report. And then in this case, you're, you know, really going to be able to drill down and see how many of these users have completed the course, how many were enrolled in the course, when people were most active in the course, and then an individual breakdown of every, indi every learner who took the course, whether they completed it and what their score was. So this is a good high level report that you're going to be able to print out, download, um, and then, you know, really, you know, um, uh, you know, go, go into your meeting with, for instance. Um, now, what we find is that organizations, when they've got the time, uh, do want to be a little bit more data driven. So they're going to spend more time using our custom reports tool. And this is where you can, you know, really drill down right off the bat um, in terms of what it is you want to report on, whether it's courses, certificates, badges, curriculums, um, and some of those features would make more sense if you're going through a full demo. Um, uh, but if I was to, just to go through a quick, you know, workflow with you here, you can drill down into specific user groups or report on kind of all users across the board, select specific courses you want to report on, select the timeline you want to report on, the criteria that you want to show up on that report. And then once you've, you've selected all of your criteria, the report is essentially ready to go and you can save it, show it or schedule it. The scheduling feature can be really powerful if you want to take a little bit of those, um, I guess, uh, menial tasks away from men members of your management team. They no longer have to log in and run reports. You can schedule the report and it will end up in their inbox, let's say every Monday at, at 10 a.m. Um, but if you want to just save and show the report quickly, any data that I just asked for will populate for me on my screen like so. And then I can basically play with this data, export it like in an Excel, CSV or HTML format, and then make uh, all of my, uh, my HR related decisions based on that, uh, on that data. Hopefully that was the overview that, um, that that individual was looking for. Great, thanks very much, Dan. Dan, earlier on, you were talking about uh, integration with HR, HRIS systems. Can mm -hmm. you speak about uh, what other integrations uh, are available, for example, point of sale systems uh, or other types of environments? Yeah, so Docebo has um, approximately 40 out of the box uh, integrations, um, as well as a, a, an open API um, with webhooks um, that has been taken adv advantage of to build hundreds, if not thousands of, of integrations with, with other systems. But some of the, the more common integrations um, that we see as, as part of our out of the box integrations are concerned would be with payment gateways. Um, so for instance, systems like, uh, you know, PayPal, Stripe, Zora, CyberSource, things of that nature. Um, there's out of the box integrations with about eight different webinar tools, including Zoom, WebEx, GoTo, GoToMeeting and that whole suite and a number of others. Um, CRM uh, systems like Salesforce, HRIS systems like, you know, Bamboo HR, 
um, a number of reporting and analytics tools. Um, so there, there are really a number of out of the box integrations um, that the system um, uh, you know, uh, would basically require a, a flip of the switch uh, in order to turn on, as well as the ability to build integrations with uh, a number of, you know, basically endless tools out there. Great. Thanks, Dan. Uh, another quick question here for you. As a LMS administrator, what day-to-day -day tasks can artificial intelligence get off my plate? Uh, so we've talked about, I mean, some of these already um, here today. Um, but I mean, you know, the, setting up reminders, setting up notifications uh, for, uh, you know, for, for learners to do specific things. So maybe a course is expiring, a certificate is expiring, maybe they're one course short of completing their, their learning plan or their curriculum. So these are the types of notifications that the AI in the system will recognize and will actually remind the learner itself to complete these different tasks as opposed to a system administrator to have to go, go into the back end of the system, configure those notifications, set them up for specific groups, and then monitor those notifications to ensure that they're going through correctly. The AI is really going to uh, to take care of that. Um, but then, you know, can be anything from the automatic assignment of, of courses or recommendation of courses, the automatic assignment or recommendation of uh, different dashboards, um, the ability to uh, engage learners, um, you know, something that, uh, you know, a lot of LMS admin struggle with. The AI is really going to help with that as far as encouraging learning, encouraging sharing, uh, you know, recommending learning every kind of step of the way. These are the types of things that, um, you know, an LMS administrator uh, in theory can really take a deep breath and, and, you know, rely on the system to do for them so that they can focus on more important parts of the, uh, of the business. Great. Thanks, Dan. I have another question for you. Our LMS provides customized banners, thumbnails, and an area of photos that team members have shared to really customize the site to our brand and keep it fresh. Mm -hmm. Does Dochable have this ability to design the site to the brand? Yeah, most definitely. So um, there are a number of ways to do that. So you can fit, you can configure the branding uh, look and feel of the platform as far as incorporating uh, your own logos, favicons, um, background images, videos, color schemes to really give it that home look and feel. So it really appears as a as an extension of your website. But then at the dashboard level, you can really start incorporating, um, and we call them pages here. You can really start incorporating specific pages. Um, you know, uh, whether they are rotating banners, images, um, you know, links out to videos, iframing in a Twitter feed, whatever the case may be, just by, uh, you know, simply popping in a widget, configuring that widget, um, and then dragging it to the part of the screen that you want to. So without going through the whole process here, this is what the back end of a, uh, you know, of a, of a dashboard looks like. You have complete control in terms of what is put onto these dashboards, where these different widgets appear. And then at any point as an administrator can preview that dashboard in terms of what your learners are gonna be, be seeing. But as far as what these images look like, what the, uh, you know, the thumbnails look like, the colors and so forth, that is completely within your control uh, to do so. Great, thanks very much, Dan. Um, from Joe Dochable's point of view, which industry or customer segment are you seeing you know, the best uptake with your platform? Hmm. I mean, <clears throat> that's that's really uh, that's really a tough one. I mean, I would say um, so. Dochable, uh, you know, we are industry agnostic, so. Um, uh, you know, some of the, the more popular verticals that, that we partner with, uh, you know, would be uh, in the hospitality space, of course, manufacturing, retail, healthcare, um, technology companies, banking, financial services. Um, and then, you know, in terms of, you know, where we're seeing the, the largest kind of growth uh, sectors, a lot of that has to do with uh, you know, the, you know, the, the fluctuations of the economy, um, you know, which, uh, which industries are, you know, going through a, a bit of a boom. That's where we start seeing a little bit more acquisition in those particular, uh, you know, markets. Uh, but from a learner activity perspective and engagement perspective, that's really our bread and butter is what we pride ourselves on. So I would say, 
in, in every one of those use cases and every one of those industries, um, you know, we go uh, above and beyond to ensure that LMS administrators are trained um, on how to really engage their learners, uh, you know, with the platform and the platform itself um, has a number of tools and features um, and really has the look and feel um, to make learners want to, to be in the platform and, and be in there as often as possible. Great, thanks very much, Dan. Uh, Dan, can you talk about the Docebo Academy a little bit? We have some attendees that are interested in, you know, learning more about the details of the platform. Yeah, of course. So the, the Docebo Academy um, is a, uh, it's a post-sale academy um, that upon um, partnering with Docebo, it's something that you will have access to um, as, a, as a new customer and throughout your, your entire customer contract with us to help and assist with the training um, on that platform. So it's really going to complement the live training you're going to be receiving from your, uh, your learning and support representative, as well as your solution de deployment manager. Um, so as far as pre-sale uh, resources, um, we have, uh, you know, the ability to set up, uh, well, we have our, our knowledge base. We have the ability to set up, of course, custom demos um, with any organization, you know, on this call who wanted to get, you know, uh, take a deeper look at the platform itself. Um, and we also have the ability to download a free trial of our platform. So um, all you would have to go is, uh, you know, basically go on to www.docebo.com. Um, you can download a free trial and you're going to have access to a master platform that looks similar to the one that I'm playing in right now, where you're going to have an opportunity to test out some of your own content, play with the system a little bit and, and really get a feel for the platform itself. Um, and you can get that comfort level before, um, you know, you schedule that, that formal demo with, uh, you know, with Gilmore Global or Docebo um, so that you get, you know, really a lay of the land uh, in terms of what we're all about. Hope that, hope that answers your question. Yes, thanks very much, Dan. Uh, I think at this time that wraps up uh, all the Q and A's that we have in the line at the moment. Uh, thank you so much, Richard and Dan. That was very helpful. Um, I appreciate all of your time um, and I look forward to seeing you all both in the future. You got it, thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.